to describe the location of mathematical points. How very exciting. This is page 263, since I hear a flurry of pages. Definition of a line. A line is the locus of all points in a plane that are equidistant from two specified points. Make all kinds of sense? No. That's what I thought. Example 37.2, next page. So here's what it means. Uh... Example 37.2, find the equation of the line that is equidistant from the points 4, 2, and negative 2, 3. It got all blurry. Tap it. But it's taking like a minute to focus. It's still recording your voice. Yeah. Do the best you can. Just move it. Do the best you can. Pray, Pray. Uh, I need purple. 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 It was really focused. Yes. Alright, so we are looking for a line that is runs exactly between mm. this point and this point. So if you want a, if you want a quick visual, uh, a straight line. Uh, let's see, negative 2, negative 3 is over there and down here. 4, 2 is 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 2. So we are looking for the line that is exactly halfway between these two points. It's going to be about like that. Any place on this line, like this part right here, if I, if I had drawn this exactly correctly, the, the distance from the line to here would be the same as the distance from the line to there. From this point here, the distance from this point to from uh, this spot on this line to this point should be the same as to that point. From the, here on the line should be the same distance to here as it is to there. Obviously, I'm a little bit off, but that's the that's the idea. You don't need to graph it in order to work these problems. First of all, what is the distance formula? I'm guessing. I'm guessing that's the midpoint formula. Oh. What's the distance formula? Radical. Big no, no. square root of x1 minus x2. Or that. Okay. Square. Square. You could do it that way. I like it this way. Y squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. That's the distance formula. Okay. Yeah. If we. Let's put a uh, let's put a point right here and let's call this point x y. This one here is negative two and negative three. Thank you for shutting the door. And this point here is four two. Let's take the let's find the distance between these two points. So we've got the square, big square root of. Let's set this up. How did you put that last dot in? That black dot? Suddenly got clear. I, I'm just calling it XY. It's a it's a generic point on that line. So you're trying to make it right at right triangle, right angle triangle with that dot? Uh, I just wanted to find the distance between these two points. This sucks. Why, what did, why did you make that point there? Why didn't you make it somewhere else? I guess is what I'm If I put it somewhere else, you could ask why did I make it there? Well, why don't Stupid. Because of the definition that we're doing here. So we just pick a random put, spot. Put right? off your why question for a minute. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Alright. So how are, we, how are we going to find, if we use the distance formula, to find the distance between x, y, and 4, 2? How do we do that? Distance formula. And then 4, 2. Will that will this give us the distance between these two points? Uh, Say yes. 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 Good job. Okay. <clears throat> now let's uh, let's do the distance between these two points. 
distance formula. So we're going to have the big square root, something minus something squared, plus something minus something squared. And if we're doing the distance between these two points, we've got, our, we've got x and y, except now we want the distance from x, y to negative 2, negative 3. So an x of negative 2 and a y of negative 3. This will give us the distance between this point and anywhere on this line, call it x, y. This will give us the distance from this point to anywhere on this line, call it x, y. To, to be a bit generic. So what we're doing with these types of problems now is we're saying we are defining this line as being at where the distance from the, in, anywhere on this line to this point being equal to the distance from that same spot on this line to this other point. So that formula, or, or so that the equation is parallel to the line that those two dots are trying to make. Uh, this will, by definition, this doing this with a given point, another given point, and any generic spot on the line that we call x, y. So, uh, working this out will give us the equation of that line. Wait, I don't get why we're not just, just using that. Midpoint formula? Yeah. The midpoint formula would tell us the coordinates of this point right here. So it would not tell us this line. Why do we need to find where the dot is? We don't. That's why I just call it generic x, y. What does that dot have a purpose for? Oh, so you take the because it's on the line. Exactly. Okay, I think some of you might be overthinking this. If we want to find the equation of this line, this line is and, and anywhere on this line, it's the same distance to this point as it is from the line to that point. So it's perpendicular. Yes, if we, well, yes. If we were to draw a line connecting these two points, this line would be perpendicular to it. Then why don't we do that? And then find the midpoint and then plug that in. Because that's a different way to do this. I'm teaching you this method. But I'm teaching you this method right now. If your aim was simplicity, you probably shouldn't be in this class. Really? I was forced to do yes. I know. <laughs> Sucker. Okay. So th this is what we're doing. We're, all we're doing is using the distance formula twice. Once from x, y to one of the points, and then again from x, y to the other point, and we're setting them equal to each other. So we need to simplify this nastiness here. What do you think the first thing I'm going to want to do is? Square. Uh, square. Be, what did I heard over here? Somewhere. Square. You know, let's square both sides. If the square root of this equals the square root of that, if I square both sides, then both of these radicals go away. Right? Yes, sir. Alright, now I just need to work it up. Now I just need to work it out. Wait, why couldn't it... Why, why do we have to square... There were two squares right there. Why didn't we just take the square root of that and make it just... Because, we can, uh, because of this plus. Alright, okay. If it was this squared times this squared... Then I could cancel the square root with these squares. But I can't do that because it's a sum. And so what I had to do was take a, I squared both sides to get rid of those radicals. Everything else stays. Alright? Got it. Uh, this is good. X minus negative 2 is the same as saying X plus 2. Uh, what's X plus 2 squared? X squared plus 2X, 4X uh, four plus 4. Plus 4. Uh, y minus negative 3 is the same as saying y plus 3. What's y plus 3 squared? Uh, so it would be y squared plus 6y plus, six plus, plus nine. 9. And we're adding those together. Isn't it 6y? Yes, thank you. That's, yeah. Good catch, good catch. Equals. All right, so x minus 4 squared is? x squared minus 8x minus 16. Not plus 16, that's what I mean. And then y minus 2 squared is? y squared minus 4y plus 4. Okay, and we are adding that. I hear the whispering in the back. Thank you for Can't seeing. zoom out anymore. Okay. Now this step is really handy.
Yeah. Now, uh, it's asking for this in slope intercept form. What does slope intercept form look like? Y y it looks like y equals mx plus b. So if we, let's do this then. That's a horrible looking b. Let's try to answer it twice. Close enough. Y equals mx plus b. If we, want it, if we want the end result to be in this form, why don't we take the opportunity now and move all of the y terms to the left. We have a y term over here. Let's add 4y to both sides. So that will cancel. And let's get all the x terms on the right. So let's add 4, or do a minus 4x to both sides. So that cancels. That's a 4. And let's see what we got here. 10y. Wait, wait, wait. There's still, there's still other numbers on the y side. I know. I'm getting there. All right, so we've got we've got six y and four y is ten y. We have nine. Uh, four plus nine is thirteen. I'll deal with the numbers next. On the right side, we've got negative eight x minus four x is negative twelve x, and we have sixteen plus four, which is twenty. Let's move the well, y's on the left, number uh, x's and numbers on the right. Let's so we'll move this over to the other side. So that cancels. Now we have 10y equals negative 12x plus 7. And then finally, do what? Divide. Divide everything by 10. Yeah. So that cancels, and we are left with y equals negative 6 fifths. Reduce this negative 6 fifths x plus 7 tenths. And this is going to be the equation of this line right here. My eyes are tired. Uh, with a little bit of practice, it's actually very efficient. Well, it looked you like took up the entire board in one problem. I also wrote out quite a bit. As you get more efficient, it'll get faster. Right? And so this, so this is how you do it. So the, on these types of problems. <clears throat> the line equidistant, uh, the line equidistant from two points is the line that's equidistant from two points. <clears throat> so you pick a generic, just lay any point on the line, call it x, y, and we do the distance formula twice. Once with the distance between one, this point, once and again with the distance to the other point, set them equal to each other, and simplify that and put it in the form that it wants it in, which is usually going to be the slope-intercept form. We'll learn some other forms later, uh, but there, that's what you do for these types of problems. Is that all? Yeah, thank you very much.